Speaker House of Representatives Femi Gbajabi Amila has revealed that security and welfare of the people will be the primary purpose of the government as the constitution obligates the security and promotion of the well-being of the people by the government. Speaking at the resumption of the plenary session of the House of Representatives in Abuja, Femi charged the leaders of various communities to adopt the policies of accommodation and brotherhood, also ensure that the insecurity threatening the peace of the country should not be attributed to their actions and utterances. He therefore acknowledged the efforts of personnel for their sacrifices in ensuring peace in the country and further stated that more focus will be on the tasks that are yet to be completed, such as bills which are still in the legislative process, as these bills would propose significant improvements across different sectors of the country. He assured that the bills would be presented to the president as soon as possible. We must unite to ensure this dangerous trend does not lead to circumstances that threaten the forthcoming elections. The quality of the political conversations in society, particularly in the lead up to elections, is a determining factor in the electoral outcomes and the quality of governance that will result therefrom. When political discourse seeks to unite the people behind an agenda of shared prosperity, social development, and respect for the humanity of persons, governance will also reflect these priorities. The security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. With these words, the Constitution obligates us all to who swear to serve the government to do everything to protect the lives and property of all citizens and promote their well-being above all else. This obligation is central to the governing contract between the government and the citizenry. As leaders in our various communities and constituencies, we must adopt a, a, a politics of accommodation and brotherhood. And we must ensure that no insecurity threatening our country's peace can be attributed to our actions or utterances. This is our constitutional obligation and a moral duty from which we must not deviate. I wish to acknowledge with the most incredible gratitude the efforts of our men and women in uniform, who at this moment are stationed in different parts of the country, taking risks and offering the supreme sacrifice to keep the peace. They are the best of us, to whom we owe not only our gratitude but also our continued dedication to the offices we hold. Through our efforts to improve the lives of our people, let us make ourselves worthy of the sacrifices these men and women have made and continue to make on our behalf. This year, it is imperative that we focus our efforts on completing the tasks we have already initiated and closing out the assignments on which our legacy in this ninth house will be assessed. Several bills still in the legislative process need to be actioned as a matter of urgency, as these bills propose significant improvements across different sectors of our national life. Some of these bills are still in committee, while others are awaiting concurrence in the Senate. We will see to it that we conclude work on these bills so that they can be presented to Mr. President during the life of this administration. Despite many challenges, including the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, the contraction of our national economy, and a drastic reduction in resources available for the development, we have made reasonable progress in achieving the objectives we set in our agenda. It is time to consider what has been done, what we didn't do, and why. The Committee on Monitoring and Implementation of the Legislative Agenda will review activities of the Ninth House of Representatives and present a report on the implementation of our Legislative Agenda to the House. This is necessary to ensure that we have a report card to show the Nigerian people at the end of our term. But just as importantly, this review will allow us to better understand where we succeeded and where we didn't as a guide for the future. Government is a continuum. The actions of one administration will continue to impact the country long into the future. As the, democratic process, as the democratic process leads to continuous personnel turnover, it is vital to have a system that allows future office holders to understand the decisions made by their predecessors. In the executive arm of government, it is established practice to prepare handover notes. I wish today to propose to the House that we adopt this practice at the committee level. Over the last few 
appropriation cycles. Mm -hmm. The dire conditions of our national finance have required significant borrowing to finance government operations, sustain investments in infrastructure and national security, and improve the living conditions of the Nigerian people. Just as the Ninth Assembly has reformed the appropriations process to ensure timely budget passage, we also intend to leave a legacy of transparency and accountability as a standard for the future. Therefore, as part of preparing our reports, we must make a deliberate effort to give a complete account of our oversight activities in the Ninth House of Representatives. However, Honorable Amadou Usman Jaha said that the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, should be made compulsory and that it is of great importance as it will make the corpus discover things outside their domain which they haven't been conversant with. So I totally disagree the issue of making NYC optional. It has to be a compulsory, it's a service to the nation, it happens everywhere in the country, including advanced countries of the world, and it should be in Nigeria too. Thank you, sir. Mr. Speaker, substantial part of graduates realize the importance of NYAC after having won. Because by the time they go out, they will discover a lot of things that have not been conversant with in their area. So if you said it's optional, you know how our people are. People may think that it's not even serious, it's not going to impair on their qualification to vie for anything in the past or to occupy certain position. If you make it compulsory, definitely everybody will go and at least discover some things outside his domain. 